Hi, welcome to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be learning how to add statistics that includes like graphs and line charts and pie charts and all that fancy kind of stuff. So what you first want to do is after you start your server is to close it because we're going to be installing some packages. So the package you want to install is Expo install React Native Chart Kit. And as that installed, I will show you the GitHub repo for it. And it includes some very nice documentation. It, it, and it includes line charts, pencil line charts, pie charts, bar charts, progress, contribution graphs, and basically any sort of statistics that you might want to show in your app. So if you scroll down, you can notice that it also includes how to incorporate these, all the different functionalities of these, what works in iOS and Android. And for all of these, based to my knowledge, work pretty good in both iOS and Android. So this link to the GitHub page will be in the description box below if you want to check it out and customize your work as you are adding statistics and graphs and all these sorts of stuff inside your Android projects. So it looks like our package is done installing, so I'm going to restart the server. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it up on this phone as well. And great, now it's up and running and we are good to go. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to first import all of this into our projects. So if you go over to the GitHub repo and you scroll all the way up, this top part is how to import everything. So I'm just going to copy that over and I'm going to place this towards the top of my project. So just copy it and paste. And for me, for something like this, I like to condense it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that just because for it, if it's something like this, it's just easier for me to have it all in one place. And if you're using Atom like me, you can also toggle soft wrap in order to have it come around. So what we're first gonna do is that we're gonna first try putting this line chart onto our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go again to the repo and I'm just going to copy all this code over. And then I'll talk about some of the different aspects that you'll see when this comes onto our screen. So if we save this, you'll it looks like it's not appearing and the reason is because I don't think installed this properly. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall and then see whether it works. So it looks like um, we also have to install this React Native SVG. So just go ahead and install that as well. And now that we have our packages installed, you can go ahead and see that we do got another error, but this one you didn't have to stop the server for. Over here, we just set the width to the length of the screen or specifically the width of the screen, because that's what the dimensions.getwindow.width does. So just make sure that at the top in this React Native, you install dimensions as well. And then your code should work, as you can see here on our test screen. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of talk a little bit about how you can edit this graph in order to be what you want. So first, these are the labels at the bottom. So January, February, March, April, May, June. And the number of 
things that you have at the bottom should be equal to the amount of data points you have because that means there's one data point per label. But even if you don't, for example, if we ha added one more, let's say July, it's just going to be a little bit weird. So it's not going to exactly line up with individual points. It'll try to even it out and therefore your graph will become weird and hard to understand. So it's best to have the number of labels be equal to or in some sort of ratio, like one, five, 10 to your data set. So instead of doing math.random, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in seven values. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now you can see we created this sort of curve. You can see that there's like some sort of curves as you go up. So what you can do is that you can scroll down instead of making it be sure, you can kind of just remove that and it becomes a straight line. So this be sure here is what makes it curved. And it just makes your edges a little bit rounded because if it wasn't one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it could be three, seven, two, eight, five, four. Then if we remove the bezier, then it's like these straight lines. Now this may look nice to you, like something like this, you may want that. But for those who want to have them curved, that's why bezier is a really nice option. So that's how you deal with the data section of this. The width is basically just the width of the screen right now, but you can customize it. So for example, we can have 220, that's a little too small. So if we have, let's say 400, that gets a little bit bigger. We can change it to 300. And this is allows for a lot of customization within your app, especially in the settings. You can increase the height as well. So we, for example, we can have like 400. And I think that looks a lot nicer for something so color heavy like this. And I'm just going to change these two abbreviations just so that the bottom part just looks a little bit nice. And perfect. Now it looks a little bit nicer on the bottom. And you can kind of see here that even though we have just normal regular numbers, we have these Ks and decimal places here on the right side. And the reason is because of this label and suffix. So label is what you put in front and suffix is what you put at the end. So if we, if I just remove these, as you can see now they're regular numbers. And these is the Y axis intervals. If we change it to, for example, nine, you can see that our intervals are a little bit different. This is the main part that you're going to want to be editing. And this just changes the overall appearance of the graph. So you can change the background color. For example, if I make it gray, if I, eh. you'll see that it doesn't do anything because we have this gradient. So if I remove the gradient, then you'll see the black grayish color. But if I add the gradient again, then you'd have to add edit the gradient itself. For example, DDD to 111. Then you can see that we get this sort of nice gradient. But I don't really like this gradient, so I'm just gonna remove it. You can also set the number of decimal places you have on this left side here. So for example, if I have zero decimal places, then I'll just have whole numbers. You can set the color of like these labels, styles, you can set the dot appearance. So that's why you can see this orange outline here. So if I make that, now it's gray. And you can basically customize this line graph however you want. 
And the nice thing is that since most of these parameters are the same, you can just change it between each graph. So for example, the bar chart, you can change it to this is kind of bothering me. I'm just going to change it over here to white. OK, great. So you can also change this to pie chart. And for something like a pie chart, there is obviously some parameters that you're going to have to change. For example, this um, data over here. If you go over to the repo and we scroll down over to pie chart, then you notice that the data is a little bit different. So if I just copy over this sort of data, and I paste that over here, not over there, just in here. And remove the semicolon. Then you can customize it like this. I'm not quite sure why there's an error. I just edited the styles a bit and it was able to work. So that's basically all that I have. Just this um, library is super helpful for you to create different types of charts. And I hope this video was helpful. See you in the next video.